Now that we have seen in the previous video the definitions for limits at infinity and the interpretation in terms of horizontal asymptotes, we are going to see how to find these limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes in the case of rational functions in particular. So we will focus on this case of quotient of two polynomials. So for rational functions, um, this is what we're going to look at. And so since we have a quotient of two polynomials, we might start with looking at a very simple quotient of two polynomials, 1 over x. Of course, if x grows without bounds, I have 1 over something going to infinity, it's going to go to 0. And similarly, if I take a positive power of the variable x and x goes to infinity and c is a non-zero constant then when I have c divided by x to the r if r is positive x to the r is going to go to infinity when x does so I have a positive constant I'm sorry a non-zero constant c divided by something going to infinity it's going to go to zero as well with this in mind let's try to see what that means for limits of more general rational functions. For instance, 3x plus 4 over x cubed plus x minus 3 when x goes to infinity. The standard procedure will be to factor on top and at the bottom the highest power of x we can. So at the top we're going to factor x and it is then multiplied by 3 and by 4 over x. At the bottom we're going to factor x cubed and it's multiplied by 1 plus 1 over x squared because if I multiply x cubed by 1 over x squared I get x and by negative 3 over x cubed so that when I multiply that by x cubed I get negative 3. The x over x cubed rewrites as 1 over x squared at least for x non-zero and of course uh, we're interested in what happens for x large and so we obtain this expression, limit of 1 over x squared multiplied by this big fraction, 3 plus 4 over x divided by 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 3 over x cubed. These terms are all of the form a non-zero constant divided by a positive power of x, and therefore they all go to zero as x goes to infinity. Therefore, this fraction goes to 3 because the top is approaching 3 and the bottom is approaching 1. On the other hand, 1 over x squared is again a non-zero constant over a positive power of x and therefore goes to 0. So both terms have a limit and therefore their product also have a limit which is the product of the limits. So the limit is going to be 0 multiplied by 3, 0. Now imagine that we redo the same thing in a similar situation but for another quotient of polynomials where at the top the degree is less than the degree at the bottom. Then we're going to factor the highest power of x at the top, the highest power of x at the bottom which is a biggest power and so we're going to get here something like 1 over a positive power of x because the degree of the bottom is higher. On the other hand, this would be multiplied by something where I have the leading coefficient of the top plus some terms going to zero divided by leading coefficient of the bottom plus some terms going to zero. Therefore, this whole thing is going to go to some non-zero constant. As a result, the product is going to be zero multiplied by a non-zero constant and the limit is going to be zero. In other words, if p and q are polynomial and the degree of p at the top is less than the degree of q, then the limit of p over q at either plus or minus infinity is going to be automatically zero. The interpretation in terms of asymptote is that the x-axis, y equals zero, is an asymptote. What if now we assume that the degree of the top and the bottom is the same? Well, let's look at an example. 
So for instance, here we have the limit at negative infinity of 2x to the fourth minus x squared plus 3 over 5x to the fourth plus x plus 1. So the same degree, degree 4, at the top and at the bottom. If we follow the same procedure as before, that is, we factor the highest power of x, x to the fourth, at the top and at the bottom, we obtain this expression, and after cancelling the common factor x to the fourth, we obtain at the top 2 minus 1 over x squared plus 3 over x to the fourth, at the bottom 5 plus 1 over x cubed plus 1 over x to the fourth. These terms here are all of the form a non-zero constant divided by a positive power of x, and therefore their limit at infinity is zero. That means the top is going to approach 2, the bottom is going to approach 5, and therefore the quotient is going to have limit 2 fifths. Now more generally, if we redo the same procedure with two polynomials of the same degree, then if we factor this highest power of x at the top and at the bottom, we're going to get the same power, and it's going to cancel out. We're going to have to obtain after this cancellation a constant plus a bunch of term going to zero divided by another constant plus a bunch of term going to zero. And this constant at the top and at the bottom are the leading coefficient at the top and at the bottom. And this is how we obtain the limit when the degree of the top and the bottom is the same. The limit of the quotient is going to be the quotient of the leading coefficient of the top and the leading coefficient of the bottom. Let's call that number m. The geometric interpretation is that the horizontal line y equal m is an asymptote. The third possibility is that the degree is higher at the top. So let's turn the board again to look at an example. Let's look at the limit at infinity of 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 5 divided by 1 minus x squared. So we have degree 4 at the top, 2 at the bottom. If we continue with the same procedure of factoring the highest power of x at the top and at the bottom, we factor x to the fourth at the top, x squared at the bottom. And after cancellation, we have x squared multiplied by a fraction which is a constant plus some terms going to zero, divided by another constant, plus some terms going to zero. The x squared here is a positive power of x, and x goes to infinity, so this is going to go to infinity. On the other hand here, I have two plus terms going to zero, divided by negative one plus terms going to zero, so this is going to approach two over negative one, negative two. The product is going, therefore, to approach negative infinity. In other words, I get an infinite limit. So more generally, if the power at the top is higher, I factor out the highest power of x at the top, at the bottom. After cancellation, I'm going to get a positive power of x multiplied by a fraction of the form a constant plus terms going to zero divided by another constant plus term going to zero. So this fraction is going to approach some constant and the product is going to have an infinite limit. In other words here, when the degree at the top is higher, we obtain that the limit of the quotient is infinite. Could be positive infinity, negative infinity, you have to be a little bit more careful to see precisely what that is. That depends on the sign of the leading coefficients for p and q and also whether the difference of the degrees is odd or even. I'm not going to get into these details. But in any case, because the limit is infinite, that means that there is no horizontal asymptote. So now that we've went through these examples, we can use this general result um, without having to go through this factoring again. We can use uh, all these three situations as CRMs and conclude uh, immediately for the limit at infinity. So for instance, if we were to find the asymptotes of the function 2x squared plus x plus 1 divided by 3x squared plus 4, you see that the bottom is 3x squared plus 4, so it is 4 plus a positive 
multiple of a square, therefore it is 4 plus something positive, and in particular it doesn't take the value 0. It means the domain of f is all the reals, and that means there is no place where the function f may have an infinite limit. In other words, there is no vertical asymptotes. On the other hand, to see if there are horizontal asymptotes, we look at the limit of f at infinity. In this case, we have the same degree at the top and at the bottom, and therefore, the limit at infinity is going to be given by the quotient of the leading coefficients. In this case, 2 and 3. Therefore, the limit at infinity is 2 thirds, and that means that the horizontal line y equal 2 thirds is an asymptote. Let's look at a second example. The function is 3x over x squared minus 9, and again we want to find the asymptotes. Let's start with the vertical asymptotes. We know that we can only have vertical asymptotes at values of x that make the denominator 0. In this case, the two zeros of the denominator are x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. When we plug x equals 3 at the top, we get 9. If we plug x equal negative 3, we get negative 9. In either case, we get a non-zero constant at the top and 0 at the bottom, and therefore, at 3 or at negative 3, the function f is going to have infinite limits. Therefore, both vertical lines x equal 3 and x equal negative 3 are asymptotes. On the other hand, to determine whether f has an horizontal asymptote or not, we need to look at the limit of f at infinity. In this case, we examine the degrees. The degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is 2, and we have seen that in that case, when the degree at the bottom is higher, the limit is 0. The interpretation is that the x-axis, y equals 0, is an asymptote. Let's take a look at a third example, 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6, starting with the vertical asymptotes. They correspond to the zeros of the bottom, and these zeros are, in this case, x equal 2 and x equal negative 3. If I plug x equal 2 at the top, I get 2 cubed, that's 8, times 3, 24, plus 4, 28, plus 1, 29, so a non-zero constant divided by x minus 2 over x plus 3, which would approach 0 when x is approaching 2. In other words, at x equal 2, I would have a non-zero constant divided by 0. In other words, I would find an infinite limit. At x equal negative 3, similarly, at the top, I get a non-zero value because negative 3 cubed is negative 27 times 3 negative 81 and then we have minus 6 plus 1, so a non-zero value. In other words, both lines x equal 2 and x equal negative 3 are asymptotes. Now, for potential horizontal asymptotes, we have to look at the limit of the function at infinity, and we have seen that it depends on the degrees. Here we see that the degree on the top is higher than the degree at the bottom, and therefore the limit of the function is going to be infinite, which means that there is no horizontal asymptote. However, if you look at the graph of this function, well, you see that when x goes to infinity, let's say positive infinity, sure enough, the values of the function grow without bounds, but they grow like a line. In other words, there's another kind of asymptotes that we will have to consider, and these are slant asymptotes. But this is what we will look at in the next video.